My name is Søren Brammer Schmidt. I'm from Denmark and I live in Berlin, where I've uh, been for eight years, uh, where we founded Prisma eight years ago. And this is Nico. Nico is the face of Prisma. He was supposed to be here today to help me with the demos. Unfortunately, he got sick at the last minute. So I'm going to attempt some uh, unscripted live coding today. Please wish me luck. The little guy is my son. He's 10 months old. And just last week, he, uh, he learned to stand up, and he's really proud of himself. Thank you. It, it goes something like this. He's concentrating, really trying hard, and then a big smile, and he claps for himself. I think that's awesome. And as software developers, I think we can learn something from that attitude. So what is Local First, and why are we talking about it? I think a good place to start is to look at some apps that are built this way, apps that most of you are familiar with. The first one is Linear. Linear is a project management tool. Some of you probably use it. And this came out like six, eight years ago, and it is just way better than all the other tools. And why is it better? It's better because it's fast. It's because all of your data is local. You don't need to wait for a round trip to the server to get an authoritative result before you can click the checkbox. It's fast. It feels good. All of Apple's apps, most of Apple's apps are built this way. Of course, Apple is famous for Uh, caring about uh, user privacy, so they do end-to-end -end encryption. They also have some apps that are not built this way, so if you use Apple Music, you know what that's like. It sucks. Figma is, is another really good example. It's an app that is obviously based around the document model. You, you load up Figma, it's on the web, but then you have this big progress bar. It is loading your document. But then when that is done, then everything is fast because your, your document editing is happening locally in the app. Um, so the main thing about these apps is that they're all built in a different way. They provide a great experience, but they're built different than the way most of us build apps. So to talk about the local first architecture, we need to first talk about the traditional architecture. How do we all build apps? And it, the apps we all build, they really fall into two categories. Either all of the data is on the device and it never really goes anywhere. Or the data is primarily in the cloud and you need to go and talk to the cloud whenever you want to make changes. So let's do a little experiment. Raise your hands if you're currently building apps where all the data is on the device. No cloud component. So a few hands, like maybe 10 hands. Now raise your hand if you're building apps where most of the data is in a cloud service somewhere. That's all of us, right? 95% of all apps we build, they work like this. And we all go to heroic efforts to make them decent enough to use, we put in caching, we do optimistic UI updates, we do all this hard work just to make it bearable to use. Now, the, the proposition of local first is that we do away with that dichotomy. We take the best of both worlds. So we move the app into the application. It's local on device. Ten of you are building apps th this way. In a few years, hopefully more of us will do it. And then we introduce a thing that sits on the side, a sync system that makes sure that the, the data on your, local, on your local device is being synchronized up to the sync system and to the centralized database. And that way you can have uh, multiple devices you can sync between, you can collaborate with other users, you have backup. So a saying in the local first movement is that the cloud should be a way to enhance your application, not its absolute foundation. And I love this. So why local first? When we think about ways we can build applications, there are always two perspectives. There's the perspective of the user, and there's, there's the perspective of us, the developers. What is it like to build applications this way? And for the users, it's really clear. We just want to build great apps. Most of the apps out there in the App Store, apps that you're all building, they're not great. They're okay, but they're not great to use. So that's what we want to change. But we developers, We all know this, we're lazy, and that's a good thing. That's how we are advancing this data for, of our industry. We build abstractions, we hide complexity. So that's what's really exciting for me about this local first idea. We can find, we can have a better way, a faster way, an easier way to build applications that also deliver a much better user experience. Brent talked about the local first podcast, and the most recent episode is with Dax, who talks about how he's, he's built an app this way. And he talks about how the, the sync system is really complex. He spent a lot of time building that sync system. But then the benefit is that the other developers on the team, they have a much simpler system to work in. So when they're building new features, new functionality, 
They just have to worry about data on their local app. They don't have to worry about networks and latency and all that kind of stuff, because the sync system handles that. So that's the promise. If you go and look at some of the tech talks from Linea, they talk about the same kind of thing. They spend a lot of effort building this complex sync system. But now all of the developers, they can move super fast. They can build new functionality because they don't need to worry about distributed systems problems uh, finding their way into your application. So Prisma is a company. We are eight years old now. We are 42 people based in Berlin. Um, and we've built what I think is the best ORM for TypeScript, for JavaScript, for the server. Um, and when you use Prisma to work with data in a database, there are three main workflows. One is data modeling. You have data that has a shape. That's what we call data modeling. You need to be able to change the shape of that data without causing problems. That's called data migrations. And then you need to be able to query that data and update the data. Those are the three main workflows that Prisma support. And throughout those last eight years, we have now managed to become the most popular ORM in the JavaScript TypeScript ecosystem. Five years ago, we got this question. Is or will React Native be supported? Ah, this was a hard one because yes, 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 we want to support React Native, of course. But we also know that native apps and servers, they're just different environments. When you're building a server, a, a, a website, or a REST API, you get a request, you do some database queries, you send a response, and then you blow it all up. It's stateless. You don't keep state around, and apps are really different. When a user interacts with your app, there's some state that are at a certain place in the app. They don't want your app to just restart whenever they click a button. That would be ridiculous. So on the back end, we have the benefit of just delegating all of that complexity to the front end developers. On the web, the front end developers are doing the hard work. Back end development is easy. For mobile development, well, you need to do both. So that's kind of complicated. And that's why it took us five years to, to get to this point where we now have Prisma for uh, for React Native and Expo. So today, I'm really happy to announce that Prisma is available for Prisma and for, uh, for, for Expo and for React Native. <laughs> Thank you. So it brings the three workflows I talked about before, data modeling, migrations, and querying. And then in addition, we have uh, spent the last six months creating what I call tight React integration. So that brings reactive queries and query caching. And this is where it gets tricky, <laughs> because Nick, Nico is not here. To show you what this means, we are going to, uh, to do a little live demo. So I went to Google, I searched for, uh, for Expo and SQLite, and I found this app. There's this guy called Beto, who, who builds a bunch of, uh, of demo apps. And this is one that uses, uh, uses SQLite. So let's use this to demonstrate. I have the app running here, and it's a pretty simple app. It's called Budget Buddy, and it's a personal finance app. You can uh, add new entries at the top. There's a summary of what has happened in the current month. I haven't used it, so nothing is happening. And then at the bottom, there are a list of transactions. So the idea is whenever you buy something, whenever you earn money, you can put it in here, and you have a personal finance app. Let's, um, let's go and, uh, and convert this to use Prisma. This is the Prisma for React Native repository. You can see something was merged 17 hours ago. It's still fresh. So this is what you need to do. We need to install Prisma. I've done this already because conference Wi-Fi. Here are instructions for setting it up in a bare React Native project. And if you're using Expo, well, then you can just install the, the Prisma plugin. Now let's go have a look at how Prisma works. Uh, so this is an existing application that has a database. But there's no Prisma, so we will initialize Prisma. Is this text big enough? Can you read it? It's very low, as you put it higher on the screen. That'll be OK. So now Prisma has initialized. We can go in VS Code and see what that means. There's a new folder called Prisma with a Prisma schema. Is this big enough? A little bigger. So the, the schema is where you configure Prisma and where you do your data modeling. By default, we suggest that you will use Postgres because that's what everybody is using on the server. But we are on a client, so we don't want Postgres. We want SQLite. And we have auto-completion for this. 
then you need to point to the database. And this app comes with a database uh, because it's an existing application. It's over here, app.db. We can take a look. There are two tables, categories and transactions. And transactions is that list we just saw in the UI. So we'll go and reference We will reference this existing uh, database, and then we will ask Prisma to go and introspect the database. So what Prisma does now is it goes and reads everything from the database, it comes back and it says, OK, there were two models, I wrote them into your Prisma schema. So back in the schema, we can see two models, categories, and transactions, just as we saw in the database. And Prisma was not smart enough to realize that there's a relationship between those two uh, tables. So a transaction can have a single category, and a category has a list of transactions. That makes sense. If you go back to the UI, you can see that this card is a transaction, and it's in the utilities category. So to initialize or to set up Prisma, we'll follow the instructions in the readme. We need to enable a preview feature, because Prisma for, for React Native is still in preview. So we do it like this. Then we need to generate our Prisma client. We'll do that in the terminal like this. So now Prisma has generated a fully type safe client for a database. And the last step we need to do is configure Prisma to work with reactive queries. We need to do this once in a central place in our application. So let's create a new file that we can call db.ts. So what's happening in here is that we are initializing Prisma client that is generated based on our database, and then we are extending it with the reactive hooks extension. That's what is going to provide the reactivity that I want to demo. And this component here is called the transaction list components. Let's go and have a look at it. This is the transaction list component. There's a bunch of imports at the top. Then there's some data loading, uh, some use effect to load the data in the beginning. Then we are loading transactions and categories. Um, and then down here, we are using it in the UI. It's simple enough. One thing to note is in this delete transaction function, after deleting the transaction, we are also calling get data again to refresh the UI. So that's some manual uh, reactivity we are, we are doing here. We are also manually using use state twice to store categories in our transactions. And some of you are probably thinking of better ways to do this but this is what this demo app does. Now let's convert this to using Prisma and see how much simpler it can be. Um, so let's say this is old stuff. We'll keep this around for reference. And then this, uh, let's load some, ca some transactions. And I don't, I don't know if I should be using const anymore, if it's let now. Or it's so confusing. But we're just going to go with this. First, we need to import or extend the client, I think it was called. Extend the client, right. Oh. From uh, DB. OK. And we have our extended client. And because this is Prisma, it's generated based on our database, it's fully type safe. So what do we have here? We have some functions for, for working with the database. But most importantly for us, we have categories and transactions. So let's go to transactions. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to load all of the transactions. So we want a list of transactions. And that means we can use the find many. And find many is the traditional Prisma query method. If you've used Prisma before, you know this will return a promise that will eventually resolve to the data from the database. But because this is a, an app, we want to have a different kind of reactivity. So we have introduced use find many, which does not return a promise. Instead, it works with the React hooks ecosystem to update the data whenever the data in the database changes. So we can use it like this. We want to select all from transactions, order by date, descending. OK, so let's, uh, let's order. Auto completion is nice. By date, OK. And we wanted it to be descending. Perfect. 
Let's take a look at the type of this return value. You see, this is a type that matches what is in the database. We didn't have to manually type this. There's no way for this to get out of sync. Uh, it just works. So that takes care of this first part. We also want to load categories. And you see here they're loading them in, in two different queries. But if you remember back to the Prisma schema from just before, you saw that Prisma had already figured out that there's a relationship between those two. So instead of having a second query, we can, uh, we can use include to say, actually, when you're talking to the database, please also go and get the, the related category. So now the type of this returned value is still a list of transactions and a new category is filled um, with that category. So that's really nice. With this, we can get rid of uh, most of the old stuff. Let's delete uh, the use state, uh, loading the database. We don't need the use effect anymore. We don't need these SQL queries that are untyped and without the auto completion. We can get rid of all of this. Thank you. If we go to the definition of use, find many, we can have a, a quick peek at how this works under the hood. Um, so this is a Prisma client extension. This is what we ship with the library. And it is using um, use state and use effect under the hood to, to set up the reactivity automatically. Um, so let's do the last change here and simplify delete transaction. Again, we use extended client. It's a transaction we want to delete. And we want to delete where, uh, where, yes, where the ID matches. So this is it. Again, auto-completion and type safety. And because of the built-in reactivity, we don't, know, we don't need to go automatic, uh, manually and refresh the data. Prisma takes care of that for you. So much simpler. Now we can go and make a small change in the view to, to, to sync all of this up. Um, so here we did this. Uh, we're doing the mapping, of course, but we had to do this manual work to, to link the category and the transaction together based on the ID. We no longer need to do this because the, the category is just embedded in the transaction. So we can go down here. The category is actually in the transaction in the category field. Oh, and I think I called this uh, transactions too. Now everything is good. You see the transaction list item is still manually typed, so they don't quite uh, match up, but we're not going to fix that now. Leave that for later. Back to the presentation to, uh, to round this off. So we demonstrated type safety, auto completion, and introspection. I wanted to also talk about schema evolution, how you update your schema, uh, but I don't think we have time for that. So let's just uh, move ahead. The, the key thing that I want you to remember is that you can, in line number one, you can just declare the data you need at the top of your, of your, um, of your component, then you can use it in the view, and then anywhere in the application, you can make changes to the data. It can be in the same component or some other component, and any component that is currently rendered on screen will automatically update to reflect the new data. We do this using uh, state and hooks under the hood. So if you want to try this out, you can go to pris.ly slash expo. That's linking to a blog post that is going up as we speak. And if you want to look at the example app I just showed you, it's at this link on my GitHub, the Budget Buddy Expo app. So we now have a really nice uh, type safe with auto completion way to interact with your data locally. We have a way to automatically update the UI when the data changes. And the missing piece is this. We want seamless data sync. We want to sync with the cloud and with other devices and people we are collaborating with. Um, so we're working on this too. And if you go and read the blog post, you'll see that we have an experimental version of this available. Do not use it in production. It's something I hacked together in the last two weeks. It's very much a proof of concept, but it's there and it's open source and you can go and try it out. My goal is to come back here next year and show you the production ready version of this thing. And if any of you want to go on that journey with me and Prisma, uh, we're looking for design partners. So please come and talk to me uh, today or reach out to me on Twitter. We would love to work with you to make sure that we're designing this syncing system and the local first uh, system in a way that works for you. Thank you very much.